Um, have you seen the movie The Matrix? Um, very philosophical movie. What is it? The Matrix. That's right. It's basically um, an allegory to man's problem. I said it was it's absurd. absurd. I said absurd. Why is it absurd? Because it, because it doesn't deal with the problem of intelligence that moves through and with electricity. So he Therefore, said these were this was a philosophical work. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you saying there's no philosophy yet? Of course that not. Of course not. Well, I, I but it's, 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 it is a kind of philosophy called reductionism. Oh, that's a school of thought in philosophy? Yeah, well, <clears throat> it's very common. I, I once gave a talk about it. <clears throat> so everybody knows it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, let us work with the... Let us work with the least denominator that yeah, we can bring man to consider. The least denominator. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of mathematical, the least denominator. So that's the atom? You go all the way to the atom? Or? Yeah, all of that. It's all the same. Or, yeah, random Brownian movement. We can understand mankind with terms of neurophysiology. Mm -hmm. Same old crap. Yeah. No, you can't. You can understand what you understand to be all that's in mankind, but there's more than what you can imagine. Well, is it really philosophical if it just stops with the... Well, only, only in some loose way it's oh. philosophical. <laughs> that is, it may deal with the implications of the absurdity of dealing with it in terms of that lowest common denominator. Oh. Which I presume is the object of the film. Because I saw that film and I never oh, no, got it. There, there's much more. There's much more. That was only a small part of the the whole. But um, what, what would be another example of a, a common reductionism uh, theory or what people say? Well, the basic <coughs> the basic one is. Uh, Facing one's thinking on sense perception. The only thing that's real is things that I can see, touch, taste. That's reducing, that's reducing everything to a sense phenomenon. 
You know what's wrong with society? Capitalism. Yeah, that's true, but it's not true. Because there's more beyond oh, okay. that. Yeah. Same thing, or it's always the same. It, it reminds me of the, the really eager um, student and Kung Fu master. Oh. He's very eager to, I want to fight, I want to fight. Uh, but the master is like, just slow down a bit. First walks up steps, up and down, carry some water up the steps. Uh, you don't have the whole picture yet. Yes, yes, right? yes. But there's such a need for some people to fight that it really doesn't matter what the issue is. They want to fight it. They just want an excuse. Give me an excuse so I can beat up someone. No, nobody likes commands. They respond to their, their urges, yeah. their immediate urges rather than... Yeah. Which, are, which, are, which is quite compelling. I don't know. I bet I could come in. It feels, it feels very real. Of course, that's the most real that they experience. Therefore, they think it's real. It, it is not that it. It is not that it lacks reality. <clears throat> it just means it hasn't reached the highest. Well, the more profound, so why stay on that level? <coughs> because it's easy. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. And it tastes good. Yeah. yeah. Well, have another uh, cupcake. Oh, I'll take one. He's already had. He's already had his chair? Yeah. David? That's why he's taking I have one. You've had one. Yesterday. One's enough. <laughs> One's enough. One's enough for a week. <laughs> Who buys the cupcakes? For a week. Huh? Yeah. She had a whole other one in the car last day. Did so, I bring both now? Yum! Just a shot of good old sugar. What? You can't turn that down. At least they're small. You get small amounts of sugar, so you eat more. Yeah, you get uh, just, uh, just enough. Is this your time? You're alive. Yeah, thank you. Shall we go back to Jeff's question? <laughs> it wasn't mine. You, you came in the door saying um, something about Prometheus. Yep. Man's problem is he doesn't understand, un understand the Prometheus myth. Mm -hmm. Did I get it close? Yeah, that's all. Um, <clears throat> post legates, how speaketh you? <clears throat> uh, what, what do you mean, Dr. G? The Prometheus myth solved all problems in the modern world. In the modern world? Yeah, well, all in the past as well, but most, most especially in the modern world. <clears throat> so. I didn't get that when I read it. <laughs> I must not have read your version. Well, the essential story of Prometheus <clears throat> is that the gods have given man the arts, including, by the way, dreams. One of the problems in the Prometheus legend is that you can't find what the Greeks think about the Prometheus legend simply in terms of what Hesiod says. You have to draw it from the tragedies, etc. So therefore, from that, you can also pull that the gods were also said to be the source of dreams and understanding dreams, and not just fire and manual arts, but all arts, so that for the, cre the, the only issue is, so what? What's the issue? Seeing? Seeing? Being able to use the arts to our benefit. It's a Better. Uh, and that light, you need light to see? Better. Better. Okay. It with dreams you see? Better. They were given to man, to free man of labor. Oh, that's right. 
Yeah. If you don't keep that in mind, you don't understand the myth. <clears throat> See, because the picture of man prior to the Prometheus event is that mankind was already erased from the earth three times before by Zeus because they were unable to mature. <coughs> they lacked the means for maturity. Those are the gifts. And only, see, if you, if you could live at the time of the Greeks, it would be so obvious. You know, because you'd look at you'd look at the people around you who are not Greeks. Mm. They lack architecture, medicine, medicine, astronomy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all of the arts. They have them all. Right? Mm -hmm. That's astonishing. Like they have the right to say the rest of the world are barbarians, which is what they did. So what's the issue? The gods have furnished mankind with the means to free themselves of labor <coughs> by mastering the art. <coughs> by the way, uh, <coughs> China has, has mastered and understood this so well that they have developed robiotics to a high point of efficiency and creativity. They have a plant, one of the major plants in China, that has 650 employees doing an incredible amount of work. By the way, in the last five years it's been reduced to 150. Wow. The, in, the, the output has jumped 450 percent, an 80 percent difference in terms of quality. Therefore, eras have dropped 80 percent. Why? Robiotics. They expect in 10 years they'll be able to run the entire plant with only 20 people. Fantastic. So what? Can we move over here? Hey, so what? Well, there's a problem that goes with that. So yeah, what is it? And Keynes uh, has a great article from about a hundred years ago. Yeah. And he foresaw all of this. That's right. He said there's only uh, three problems, but one of them is that um, what do you do with the distribution of wealth that's, that's collected right. from those robotics? See, that's, that's what they're not doing. See, mm. what did the Greeks do with, with wealth? Mm. All of the Greeks the richest ones, the richest ones, were known as a, a modus operandi to uh, maintain, build and maintain a, sh a battleship. That was their job. Then some of them, of course, got professional pilots to run them. But essentially, that's what, that's what they were doing with wealth. Put it into the defense budget? Yeah. Or yeah, infrastructure? The, the Romans kind of did something similar. The, um, the uh, patrician class was a property based on property holdings. And um, they were required to outfit the army. Yeah. Pay, pay, pay for all the weapons, all the food, all the movements, everything. Wow. And then the army was just a bunch of citizens who were mustered at a trumpet call. Yeah. <laughs> they they were <coughs> and stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was going to say one more thing, yeah. um, but that was part. That was the obligation for being yeah. wealthy. So now, see, the question is now: there's going to be incredible wealth, incredible wealth, in the hands of the owners of the plant that doesn't use human beings any longer. Maybe just twenty to clean up the, the garbage. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? To polish the machines. You have to face that and say, hey, look here, it's time to follow the Prometheus myth and let's design society where man can be free of labor so he can then do meaningful work. Philosophy, music, art, sculpting, yeah. painting. Yeah. You know that that's, that's what man should be doing. <laughs> yeah. so Using the mind. <laughs> Using the mind. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Yeah. It's obvious, well, and this isn't is it? 
this is what is uh, really gaining some traction in the last, uh, I mean, it's been around for, for a long time, but in the last, uh, I'd say, five years, really gaining some traction. And it goes by different names, but uh, it, the old name was uh, GAI, Guaranteed Annual Income. And you've mentioned to us, you've seen stuff go by, there, you know, there, uh, there's a couple of uh, economists from Switzerland that are uh, proposing this, and Germany is uh, That's right. taking it into its legislature. That's the only solution. <laughs> That's the only so it always has been the only solution. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, but the capitalists, the capitalists will argue, no. as we well know, that the only one way to solve you know the problem go with is to get a hundred, a hundred of these highly trained killers called uh, <laughs> special forces, and go to Jamaica. Pardon me, the Bahamas and raid the, the, the wealth where all the wealth Thanks. is. Are you talking about the Caymans? That's right, Cayman Islands as well. It's said to, it's said to be, it is said to hold $24 trillion. Wow. Right, $24 trillion. Hey, that's pulled out of the economy, see? Yeah. Money is a stream, money is a stream. <coughs> And it must flourish. It must go. And the tributaries must feed the land. So they're building their own reservoirs and pulling the money out and putting in their own reservoirs, put it in Cayman Islands. Wealth, capitalism is destroying society. And it always does that. So that's what we're facing. And there is any problem in Africa. All of these Africans are running to Europe. What the hell for? That's the richest continent in the world. Who owns it? Europeans. Well, now China wants to get into it. In 1870, Europeans got together and divided the wealth of Africa up. They said, you take this, you take this, you go for mines, we go for this. You go. They divided it up. Do you want to solve the African problem? Get the Europeans the hell out of this Africa. This is picking up the noise on the microphone. Oh, oh. I'll give you something else to twiddle Thank with. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is it turned on? Is his button pushed? Yeah. That's good. So <laughs> that's the Prometheus myth. <clears throat> so how does the Prometheus myth, uh, what, hmm. what effect would it have? Or what? Uh, what effect would it have? On society? Yeah. Free man from labor so no, he can then you. do philosophy. Here's to it, gentlemen. That's what we're here for. So we should be reintroducing that whole myth. I have. Reminding something. Yeah. Write an article about that. Yeah, I, 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 I was writing you write all the time. I can't I keep writing. Yeah, you've you written write. a lot. You must you be write. tired. You write it. Yeah. David's a good one to write it. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> he writes most public ones really well. As well as you do, but he, he writes longer ones. So yes. That vein. <clears throat> and the one thing that Maybe. Prometheus legend tells us which we don't understand, hmm. hope was not among the things that escaped from Pandora's box. How but do you interpret that? Right. That's the real issue. So it But it clung desperately to the inside of the lid. That's right. Mm -hmm. How do you understand that? Good question. Hope destroys mankind. What they all say of about all of the Abrahamic religions mm -hmm. are based upon hope. That's all. It's more what does hope do? It eliminates intellectual development. Well, you know, I looked up the word hope in Spanish because it has different meanings. The word esperar means hope, wait for, anticipate, wait for, look for. It does. Yeah. And everything was just pointing to a future moment. So I thought hope is something that keeps you thinking about a future. And not what? Not about the present. That's right. 
and not what to do in the present, no, so right. you don't have to hope for the future. Right. Is there? See, all of these religions are assuming that they can exist without hope. Mm -hmm. It's the essence of their religion yeah. that you have to hope for something that is impossible to believe. Right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Which is Thank what you. the coming of the, or that you go to heaven, or a bunch of things, huh? Aren't there a lot of things you hope for? Well, go ahead. Um, you hope for the, yeah, that you'll be saved in the future? You hope that you hey. hope Trump will change? You know, one of the greatest examples of this is Charlemagne. Charlemagne? He's Charlemagne, the emperor. What did he? Every night before he went to sleep, yeah. he put writing instruments under his pillow <laughs> and prayed to God and hoped he would then awaken in the morning wow. knowing you know, how to read and write. That's hope. Oh, yeah. We, we, have, that in, uh, we have that in Bosnia as well. You do? Good. You do? Yeah, where if you're, if you're studying some text, Oh, that's right. Especially when I went to um, <coughs> Islamic school. After you read the text and you memorize it, you're supposed to put it under your pillow because it will help you remember it. There, see? Yeah. yeah. No mastery is required. I remember that when I was sitting at the Zendo and I passed my first koan, I was surprised that uh, it didn't help me with math. <laughs> oh, maybe it would change my mind so I can go <laughs> It did help you with math, but you didn't say it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I had to do it myself. It was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work. Still had to do some work. Yeah. <laughs> that was a surprise. <laughs> a wake up call. Hmm. Still got to do it. Yeah. Waiting for a grace or something. <clears throat> Interesting. <laughs> so, so, so therefore, the Greeks were saved. Hope didn't escape. Didn't go along with all of the potential difficulties that man experiences. But why did hope cling to the inside of the lid? Is she lazy? Oh no, must because there's a rush. She's, there's a rush for all of these things to get out. So I have to hold back. Well, that shows the power of hope. Must have power. The clinging power. Of clinging power. <laughs> clinging power. Clinging power. Clinging power. <laughs> that's a clinging Clings. power. <laughs> Hangs you every time. Well, it's right on. See. Uh -huh. I mean, when I get in the car to go to the liquor store to get some booze, I kind of hope that there'll be a liquor store there when I get back. But that's not kind of what it is. It's more like anything that you can imagine that you would like to have fulfilled, there's no guarantee it's going to happen. Like you hope you there's, win the lottery? There's, yeah, there's, yeah. Hope you win the lottery. I hope you get the money you're owed, whatever. It's more like I hope the liquor comes to me. Yeah. No, there's a there's a more fundamental hope, isn't there? That is, you hope that you're going to experience something with booze, and oh, it yeah. never and it never fulfills yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Because That's the, the the fact is, you only experience something vivid and real in the early days when you were drinking, mm -hmm. and you want to get back to that, mm. right? Yeah, right. <laughs> right? And you have to then start having to control it. Right, a little bit here, a little bit, trying to maintain it. What's well, all hope? I see something else in the in the jar, though. After asking this, I think maybe you guys are hitting this on this with the uh, with the alcoholism. But um, hope and belief keep you in a jar. Keep you in. I mean, the, the flip side of hope is denial, right? Because take take an average Trumpian or an average Abrahamic religion uh, follower. Yeah, take Trump. Go ahead. Okay. 
um, you can present uh, an adherent with with lots of great data to the contrary. It won't work. And it doesn't work. As a matter of fact. But that's hope clinging to the lid, right? Like I want to stay in that box. Don't that's pull right. me out of this box. That's right. See, in order for hope, you have to have something you can believe in, which is contrary to the facts. You have to believe that Trump has the kind of personality and power to make changes. You have to have that hope, in spite of the fact that if you were to look at his record, it's absurd. Three failed casinos. Yeah. Right. Failed I mean, university, failed airlines. Uh, yeah, you have to ignore it. Yeah. Hope means you have to deny the reality that you know exists and base your hope that he will fulfill your dreams in spite of the evidence to the contrary. Hmm. Like, isn't it interesting that all the polls, when they go around and, and they've asked the Republicans and Democrats in Congress to what degree they thought that Trump is fulfilling his promise. Hey, 90 percent of the Republicans in Congress believe he's fulfilling his promise. Whoa. Are they working? See, now what's going to happen? What's going to happen when people wake up to the fact that they've been deluded? It's going to be really interesting, you know. This is not a small thing. It's called panic attack. I've been there. You don't think it's just lip <laughs> service? You don't think it's just lip service that they would say? Because I would be, I would be curious as to whether it was an anonymous poll or whether they had to go on record as the Republican from wherever, right, that I'm, I think Trump is fulfilling his promises. I would just be curious because I know that's, isn't that a major shift from their point of view a month ago? We're talking about the Republicans in Congress. Yes. That was different? On the no, I thought, I thought like as, as, as short of a time as maybe a month ago, only some of the Republicans thought he, a few, they were not like all behind what he was doing. But that idea that he's fulfilling his promises sounds like they're behind what he's doing. Although maybe that's not what it was meant to, not how we're meant to interpret it. It's not like saying, I agree with the way he's accomplishing it. That's right. They still believe he's going to fulfill his promises. And that they're, and does that mean they're in favor of the way he's doing it? Well, you see, the fun thing to ask is what part of what he is doing do they believe he is fulfilling? Yeah. Yeah, did they, and they didn't get that information, huh? <laughs> they, they never will because that's, you know, yeah. that, that's well, a I'm, different kind of study. But yeah. there are many Republicans who are saying what he's doing is right, which has deprived the Democrats of any political power to block any social progress. They're going along with all of those. Mm -hmm. no, he's doing that they think he's doing what's right. Mm -hmm. Well, he's useful to them as long as they can push, they've been pushing their agenda through. That's right. They, know, they, he's, they know he's crazy, but he's signing the bills. Yes, he's fulfilling their agenda. Did you read that, that article in The Guardian about uh, Trump wrote an executive order that okayed 40,000 new immigration agents to t deal with the backlog of people who need to be deported. And in a month, they've only been able to hire 40 agents because of the requirements of the job. And so they're thinking of letting the lie detector test that's part of the entrance exam or entrance requirement go away, right? Because, <laughs> and they don't have budgeting for the, all that. But nevertheless, he signed an order saying 40,000 new immigration agencies to make sure we can deport all these people in a timely manner. That's right. That's going to be a temporary job. See? Really? <laughs> right. What, how so temporary? Because once they get rid of all those people, they won't need 40,000 agents anymore. But, you know, if the way Trump, you know, I would just think he'll just find a new way to define who needs to be deported. That's right. He He'll have the another person. group called intellectuals. Yeah. But the thing is, they, they don't really want to deport people. It's I really think they don't.
they want people to be scared about it. Because if you're scared, and, and you know somebody on your block who's been pulled into ICE, you're scared. So you don't push for your rights. But it does create a slave class of cheap labor. They don't, I mean, the, maybe, maybe Trump thinks he wants to get rid of, and a few people think they want to get rid of uh, immigrants, legal or illegal. But the business class absolutely does not want to get rid of immigrants. Of course. Because it's a cheap, readily available yeah. labor I supply. think you're, you're, you're saying, if you look behind what is really going on, <clears throat> then you'll see what it is, yeah. which is fear and to, to terrorize and fear the population to keep the to keep the slave class from demanding its yeah. rights. That's right. Because they're scared shitless. Yep. I shouldn't say shitless. Most it is mostly often shit full, but. Uh, <laughs> Thanks to George Carr. Hey, Bernie nearly got in. That's what they're worried about. I hope so. Mm -hmm. That's what they're worried about. They, they realize that he uh, he immobilized the whole population. And he's continuing to he's, with his tour across the country. Yeah. Who? Bernie. 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 And even in, I think it was uh, the South, one of the southern states had a runoff. And the Democrat had 48%. Ge they Georgia. Were ter terrified. Yeah. John Ossoff. Yeah. You, know. you missed it by 1%. Yeah. One and, and so, a half percent. So they and don't know that was happen. like, that was a whole scandal. He actually was at 50.3%. That's right. The night before, and then they fiddled with the machines. We got to well, go back to paper. It's, it's also, it's an astonishing thing since they paper. disenfranchised so many blacks from voting, gerrymandering and all the other tricks. Right, right. So to get that plurality is astonishing. That means it could have been 70%. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, we're living in good times. Right. Right, we're living in good times. Mm -hmm. You know, I found this interesting quote. Good. In, I was happened to come upon this book in my, mm -hmm. it's the Plotinus on the Path to Liberation. And I, I don't rem even remember. I know I bought it recently, but I was organized. Go, please. Okay, so I came upon this quote, which before Friday night, before Friday night, and I was interested in everyone's point of view, particularly yours, of course. Um, this is a quote from. Everybody will recognize this, but the translation is really nice. Then I went ahead and looked at it in here. Translation loses a lot, but it tells you whether it's auto or m auto, which in in most cases here it's m auto. Okay, so this quote, you, as I said, you'll recognize. Often, I have awakened from the body into myself, and being aware of other things, I am in myself. Sorry, <laughs> one more time. Often I have awakened from the body into myself, and being outside of other things, I am in myself, seeing an extraordinarily great beauty. I am confident above all then that there is a better destiny there. I am active in the best life and having become identical with the divine and established in it, I have reached that actuality, setting myself above every other intelligible. Having rested in the divine and then having descended from noose to discursive reason, I wonder how and when I descended and in what way my soul has come to be in the body, when it is what it has revealed itself to be, even when in the body. Could you pass that down here? Yeah. I marked the page just so you could take a, another look at it. I know you're incredible. No, 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 could you pass that to Peter? Yes, Let me see. Read it again? Give it to, give it to, give it to David? No, not to, I'll get it next. Okay. Uh, you, you marked, oh, there it is. No, you marked it where? Yeah, where the flap is. Oh, where the, flap, the is. flap is. That's, that's... On the top? On the top of the white page. Oh, often. Okay, there it is. It's on, it's on the front of the piece. Yeah, I thought maybe you wanted to look at it. Well, I'm just a slow reader. Okay. That's, uh, that's my problem, so... Uh, our, our, I have to, after people read aloud, I have to read <clears throat> things again. Me too. Yeah, I'm familiar with the quote. The, on the, the other page, uh, Pierre. Here, the, underneath the blue flap. Yeah, me too. It's just that it's I wondered how you saw 
well, that state as compared, say, to last night we were talking about the self, right, and the state of attaining to the self as a state of the brilliant light of being, as the extraordinary beauty. Yeah. And <clears throat> yet, I was curious as to whether you see a division in Plotinus, like a is there too much separation from the bodily in that quote to fit with your own experience? Well, it's... <clears throat> As beautiful as it is, yeah. uh, using the second hypothesis. Yeah, and, but last night, do you recall what you were saying last night, Pierre? I mean, I'm sure you do, but I thought you were... I, I, would, I would enjoy being recollected. Go ahead. Only, I thought that you identified... Let me see if I can trace it. I thought that maybe that's as far as we were reaching with Ken King's sequence of hmm. propositions, but I was somewhat surprised because it seemed as if you were saying that the way you identify the self-state, I'm mm -hmm. going to call it, was the extraordinary beauty. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I thought that, a, and you identified it at the time as the brilliant light of being. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you did talk about going beyond it, and I'm just stuck with the lower because I was astonished with the way you put it. That was the knowing of the brilliant light of being. Yeah, that's known. And that helps because, right now I'm on the point of, <clears throat> you put in words the question of going beyond that state, and I think you might have. He did no. at the end of... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's undoubtedly, uh, uh, as we all know, an astonishing experience of beauty. It is? Well, or? what he's talking about as well as, as well as Plato's talking about it, and et cetera, and many people talk about it. Hmm. But... Uh, It's, it's, a, it's a chronic problem. It's, it's so, so overwhelmingly beautiful, you're going to call that the real and the ultimate. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not. See, the problem, the problem mankind has is he, he doesn't believe it. He, he does not believe his experience. You can pass it back to me, Dave. That's fine. That's all. It's only or anybody problem. can look at it along the way if they want. What do you mean? Right? Yeah. I'm sorry, they're so overwhelmed by, by the beauty that no. we don't search beyond it? Man's problem is he does not believe his daily, everyday experience. That's all. How so? That's an interesting way to put it. Uh, say, uh, <clears throat> have you heard about this idea of uh, what's hearing and seeing and thinking? I have heard about that. Ah, how would you answer it? I really don't have an answer to that. See, <clears throat> she's right. She doesn't know she's right. Hmm. But he should know. <laughs> let, let me try it again. Go ahead. So, uh, have you tried to answer that question? Have <clears throat> tried. You bet. Yeah, what do you come up with? Crickets. Huh? Crickets. Nothing, in other words. Mm. See, uh, he's right. Uh, ever try to answer that question? Uh, what's your answer? Who's asking? <laughs> Go ahead. That's about it. Well, why do you think that's about it? Um, well, I just wonder. I, I don't know. Oh, I, thank you. I don't land See, on that. Right again. You know, you guys are right. Don't every, know. Every time, every time I go there, which is rare, um, I find myself um, completely liberated from all of the distractions, and uh, I get a sense of warmth and uh, peace. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's hard to hold on to, so I usually lose it at that point. 
but I find just the turning about on that question is um, most simplifying. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'll continue to be rowing the boat or whatever I'm doing. I don't know if I've never rowed a boat, but whatever it is I'm doing, I'll continue to do it. That was a koan, by the way, yeah. how do you row a boat? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, how would you answer the question? Um, Given what you've said? It's completely a, an insubstantial state of mind. You're all right. So hey, is this our everyday you, you experience? You are all right. Everything you've said is correct. <clears throat> but... Mm -hmm. So, but who gets the who gets the A plus? Who gets the prize? <laughs> no, see, see. How, how could we all be correct? In, well, in because you've all said the same thing in different ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. See, the problem is that you're, we are so caught up with with the temporality of things, what's going on now, mm -hmm. right around us, and uh, pressures from family and society and all this Look. shit. You know, it's overwhelming. Brings us right out of it. Right. So what would happen if you just, you know, you drop that shit for a moment? Mm -hmm. Then you'd see exactly what you're seeing now. Which is what? Nothing. Nothing, yeah. That nothingness. You can't really... That's the first hypothesis. Everything you've said is right. So for Plotinus to say, I was there and then I lost it and how I lost it again is that's his problem that he goes in and out of it. Yeah, he wants to he wants to make that his permanent state, which is divine luminosity. Uh-huh. You know, oh I'm in the body again. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> how come I fell? Oh right, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he ends up looking so right. Buddhist. Plotinus looks so Buddhist when he tries to How embarrassing. combine <laughs> his Platonism and Aristotelianism. That's not Buddhism at that point, by the way. So the mistake is in thinking he ever left it? He, he doesn't have the concept. If that's the heart of where he is, and uh, it's from that basis that he builds his philosophy, he's mm -hmm. not in the first hypothesis, that's all. It's very nice and beautiful, by the way, and I, I attest to it. Here's. Yeah, that's cool. I settle for the second, this time around. So the whole, the, the whole problem of, of the so-called game of meditation, there's no reason to meditate. No, not really. No. Well, it's all a meditation. Why, why not? Well, oh, you're doing something. You mean, well, sooner or later, you're going to finally, if, if you're successful, you're going to stop doing whatever you're doing. Then you'll see what it's like not to do whatever it is you're doing. That's, that's all. <laughs> what? That's all. It's very simple. It's all. It's obvious. On one level. No, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Because meditation is a kind of doing still. Yeah. Yep. And that's the problem. That's the problem. See, the problem is the, the difficulty is, is beautiful, you see. Plata uh, uh, Xenophanes and, and Parmenides have done it. They've said, hey, look, forget about the one. That's an abstraction, as it were. You know, that's something. It's remote from you. You got to go for the one, right? You have to find yourself in a state of the one. Now, put in the word self. What happens? Hmm. You, uh, you got to look for the self. It becomes very personal. It becomes personal, but it also <laughs> is mm -hmm. asserting you are there. Mm -hmm. Because yourself is here. So how is it here? It's all there is. 
That's at all. all. But it's not pleasant. It's not even really the second hypothesis because he becomes deficit. He doesn't produce from himself his own well-being. Yeah. He still needs to get back to that state to where all of a sudden he'll be with the divine yeah. again. So he does he even lacks the understanding of the propositions we read last night. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. That's typical. And of that's it. the problem of meditation: is you think you're going to become something other. So that's you're why generate something outside that, yourself in yourself. That's true. See, his his. His, his fundamental problem is he's trying, his language is Aristotelian and Platonic. That's not a good marriage. No, it's, it, it's going to put you in, in terrible binds yeah. intellectually because you can't reconcile the two. But that's the kind of language, if you posit the brilliant light of being as the ultimate state, then you can use it. Like, what do dreams, what do all the dreams do? As you look at dreams, what are, what are dreams telling us? They bring us back to the self. Yeah. Yeah, to yeah. the capital S. Yeah. And then often, to our benefit, point out where where we're stuck. Yeah, incredibly amazing. Mm. What, what? I said incredibly amazing and beautiful. I'm, every dream is like... A piece of art. I was thinking of mandalas. And I'm hey, the Indians got into the beautiful hey. mandalas, and I'm going, yeah, but every night everybody has one. They reflect on it. I mean, <laughs> the the power, the power of, of, a, of a dream. It, it knows you mo more intimately than you know yourself. <laughs> it's embarrassing. No, it's like. What? Well, you're naked at night. Knows your present, <laughs> knows your past, knows what you need to do for your future. Uh, I, I have one, by the way. <laughs> oh, well, let's do it. <laughs> no, I, I'm wondering about Gina's comment with the mandalas. Like, are we missing something that we're not focusing on the mandala-like quality of our dream? I thought she was saying that's what we do. Do we? Uh, I've never seen this. Oh, maybe not. Well, the, the, problem, no, see, the problem of the mandalas in, in Tibetan thought is the problem of visualization. The goal of the mandalas is not the mandalas, right. but you've mastered the, the art of visualizing. Yeah. So what? We know we only have 30 minutes. So it depends upon whether you move from uh, the Tibetan Book of the Dead to uh, uh, Tilopa. That's all. Are you doing that Sunday? The Book of the Dead is influenced by Milarepa, mm -hmm. but not Tilopa and uh, Martha, if you're interested. In I'm not familiar enough with those to know how they relate to dreams. Oh, okay. Do they relate to dreams? Well, it's more fundamental than that. The Tibetan Book of the Dead presupposes the brilliant light of being is the most central aspect of right. life Latinos. Right. Which is why Evan Vance's translations often quote Latinos all over the place. Sorry. But that's not, that's not Gyan. Well, I guess I should ask Gina, what, I mean, how could we be, how do you, do you turn your dreams into mandalas? And no, I don't turn them into mandalas. So, could you unfold what you mean by that mandala comment? When you look at a mandala, I see such intricacy and connection and relationship and beauty and excellence and just being able to make one for one. And uh, the The beauty of it and the intricacy of it is so revealing. Like every time you look at one, there's always something that is you hadn't seen, and it's there, and it fits. There's a theme that goes through it, and I see that occurs when people do their dreams. There's 
we don't deal with every little part, but mm -hmm. you can see them. There's a theme that goes through the dream that each of the parts can relate to, and there's an intricacy mm -hmm. in, in that. See, the, and, the, and, and it's beautiful. Yeah. See, the essential point, though, in the mandalas is that they are not individual creations. No. No, that's what's amazing. What does that mean? The best way to study the mandalas is to watch, if you can, the Tibetans, plural, working on the same painting mm -hmm. or sand, especially in, in scan and the, the great work they do in colored sands. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You'll do one part, you'll do another part, yeah. you'll do another part. You're not talking about one another. You're visualizing the same thing, and therefore it's going to fit precisely mm -hmm. together because you're all visualizing the same mandala. It's a study of visualization. That's the problem. I mean, but that's the art. So what? Well, then, you know, their meditation is to visualize enlightenment. What kind? brilliant light of being. Oh. And therefore they're following uh, Miller Rape, if you're into mm. that kind of literature. But can I just get clarity on one thing? Uh, the, the brilliant light of being is a ruse, mm. is what you're saying. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a um, uh, it's an image. Yes. And Manifestation, image. Manifestation, and that's the kind of the problem. Yeah. That he, he goes for an image rather than... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I missed part of the talk or something, yeah. but that's he right. made a jump. And yeah. I want to say, too, I appreciate the exploration. I'm not tied to Plotinus, but I, I it looks like I kept the question from last night that I didn't really have, and or I have a further question, but it's kind of like an itch I can't scratch. But I want to say uh, thank you for yeah. looking at it. Yeah. <clears throat> See, um, <clears throat> there are four works. It, it, it's worthwhile getting into Evan Vance because everybody hates Tibetan philosophy, or Tibetans hate Evan Vance. Why? Because he makes it intelligible by by lining them up in the way in which he lines them up in terms of hierarchy and he distinguishes therefore the different kinds of teachers, the three primary teachers in Tibetan philosophy. And Tilopa is the teacher of the final teacher of the three, therefore he's the wisdom teacher. And you can only get, well of course, uh, now I don't know anything about it, it's probably different, but when I was in the game, the only way you could get into Tilopa was in the secret doctrine uh, of the fourth volume of the Evans Benz translation. And in, and in that final work, he describes Tilopa's teaching as a jnana yoga, all about the self. Mm. Mm. As a matter of fact, I think I got a, a, a email from you some time ago on the, did I not from a quote from the Tilopa? I think so. I was trying yeah. to find some quotes that you had been referring to. Yeah, and then you looked it up and found it and passed it around. Oh, true. Yeah. Huh. He said, hey, what are you, what are you meditating for? It's happening right now. Take mm. a look. You know, what do you want to do? It's our everyday experience. Yeah, it's, yeah. And he puts it in, in terms of the self again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Because if you put it in any other terms, then you're going for it. I want to get into enlightenment. What the hell does that mm -hmm. mean? You know, you're going mm -hmm. to find something better than the self? A deficit model. Yeah. A okay. lacking model. Yeah. yeah, yes. You're lacking. you got to get yeah. It's going to complete you. Yeah. It's a cool story to tell yourself. Could I also, wait, just in terms of order. I really think that while you're quite correct and illuminating and saying that a mandala is a, uh, a picture of, the, of a reality that's not individual, but uh, Buddhist reality, so to speak, mm. when Gina said, made her comment, and I, I could be wrong about this, but 
I took it the way you sometimes say we get treated to a multi uh, media show every night where every part of it is mm -hmm. comes out of our own experience and relates to our own experience and I can remember way back there when an image of a shadow in my dream related most intimately unfolded a whole thing and it was just a square shadow like a zen mat and 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 so when it, when Gina said a dream is like a mandala I took it that way that mm -hmm. instead of being uh, a cosmic representation of the Buddha and the many mm -hmm. Buddhas and the mm -hmm. many Bodhisattvas and the Lotuses. It's instead you're um, something that's illuminating for you, self-illuminating. But every part of it is that beautiful three-dimensional multimedia show. So I, I took it as if it's a, a mandala but like in a multimedia show. And so I thought you didn't do justice yeah. to your idea. Absolutely. Oh, thank Let's you. Do it. <laughs> Does it sound like what yeah, you meant? Sure. Yes. <clears throat> and also that it's individual. It's not it, a mandala, like you said, is a collection of. But there's. But just looking, I was looking at it just as a mm -hmm. as a visualization mm -hmm. and the beauty of it, and the mm -hmm. just amazing and the precision and, and the yeah and intricacy of it, and every when detail. you when you look at and to add then that it's now personal. So every single night and every ninety minutes at night. Somebody has that incredible beauty and excellence, that, and and when it's to pass, when it's reflected on, it's like I don't know. It's, uh, it's the most beautiful. I don't know. It's just beautiful. Well, it, I can't yeah, say anymore. <coughs> it's just beautiful. And it's therapeutic. And that's well being. Oh, and it's yeah, always it's beneficial. Has, it's yeah. always beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. Just do doing that. You know, like. It takes me back to where we used to get into like the tiniest detail and talk. You used to talk about the fact that you could get into every single detail, the color of something, uh, yes. size of something, the image that's selected, you know. And we don't do that very much. Partially, probably due to the fact that we get epic dreams <laughs> that we could spend months on. But rather, we go for the heart, right? Oh. Of it, or the highest point, <coughs> of the theme, or the problem. Or, or we take out what we find memorable mm. that's already a screening yes, mm -hmm. yes. No, oh yeah and there hence the problem of not having a recording and even a recording it you know yourself when you make them sometimes they're one step or more removed right. it's a, uh, and you see if it has all of these qualities <coughs> That's the problem with Plato. Mm. See, Plato says in the ninth book in the Republic the importance of dream studies. But in no way does he unpack right. it. Right. That's right. And remember at one point you brought in, mm. he, I want to say Peter Kingsley, but the, the thing about that you were, <laughs> you were involved in that study the where the, the book that showed that um, the Greeks had a dream culture where you had to have a dream <coughs> that yes. was right before you had any treatment or the mysteries, either one, right? Um, medical. Yeah, medical. It was medical. Okay. But um, In the Dark Places of Wisdom, I think yes. was the name of that yes. book that you brought in. Yes. And uh, that is, shows that there was an active That's dream exploration. One of them. Um, but of doesn't them. show what? It, you know what I mean? It doesn't show how. It doesn't show. It just shows that they did it. Right? See, but there isn't any method. Mm. For you, there isn't any method. <laughs> there, isn't, there isn't any method. Because it's obvious? Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Once you've purified your logos to the point, you can just see the logos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, look here, we have one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is there another copy here? I don't know. Look, just yeah, say the, the first sentence. Well, <laughs> this is, I think... All right? Um, all we do is the first paragraph, that's all. Did you have a copy? I, I held off two. One. Oh, okay. Um, what oh, do you see? Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, 
reliving reliving the past. Yeah, it already and the has whole been. the whole family lineage. Hmm. And we're going back to it. Mm-hmm. When given that it's Eldar's dream, there's a car in it. <laughs> three generations. Grandparents too. Yeah. What else do you see? Driving home from Hagen. What's Hagen? It's a place where we lived in Germany. You're driving home from? So what? You got an answer. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? You ask questions oh, and you yeah. accept answers that have no meaning. Why do you stop? Yeah. Why do you stop? Why do I stop? Yeah, why did you stop? That didn't answer the question. Hey, well, when you ask that question, yeah. what did you want to know? I thought maybe he'd... I, I, Finish what it. Did I, want to know? I wanted to know the significance of Hagen. Thank you. You didn't ask that. Oh, okay. I should have asked. And that? you, and you took his answer as a, as a city. Yeah, right. And so therefore you lost your lost question be- yeah. because you didn't ask your question. Okay, thanks. What's the significance of the Hagen? Oh, it's uh, it's the neighboring uh, suburb where I grew up in Germany. It's like the city. That's where we went to if we wanted to go to the city. That answer? Better. What do you mean better? That's a no. Well, I'm seeing it's, I a, thought I would it's a major place. <laughs> Bullshit. Didn't answer your question. What did you want to know? What's the significance did of you, Did that answer the question? Hey, hey, did okay. that answer it? No. Then why are you giving up your okay. question? I guess I would have said, so what's the Nothing significance of returning from Hagen? No. You still don't have your question answered. Back to your original question. It wasn't answered. You asked, what is the meaning of Hagen? Did you not? Yeah, what's the significance of Hagen? Yeah. Did uh-huh. he answer it? No. Yeah. He, well, no. he said it was a major city. Hey, don't give me this bullshit. Up. Well, yes, stop. But that didn't answer it. Did that answer the significance of something to tell you it's a city in Germany where it used to live? No. No. I mean, I want to know what was going on there in Hagen when they were, when they, why were they there? Okay. You're getting close, but you're not answering the question that's here, you see. See? Uh, he gave you a story that it occurred in his youth. What was it like living in Germany and Hagen? What was it like compared to all the other places you've lived in, Eldar? Uh, is that the question? Is that that's the qu- better. But I think it's inappropriate to ask that now. That, that, that's why you can't play the game. You got it. Say it again. I, think I don't think it's appropriate to ask that question. Why not? That's the only question. Well, it might come out later in the dream. Bullshit, you're not answering my question. Why do you think it's inappropriate to ask that question? Because it's just one little statement. That still doesn't answer the question. Okay. See the problem, she said? So you have to help say. You were a kid in, in what town? What was it like living there compared to all the other places you've lived? You came from another country. You came from a different country. What was it like in Hagen? Is your youth? It was pretty gray. More. Um, I always felt like an outsider. Um, Hmm. That was also my parents' attitude about about Germany. What was I, I don't understand what what are the two? Uh, of um, the Germans are like these great um, 
elevated human beings oh. and we are beneath them. Ah. Uh, so then you were going to the, the elevated people according to this image, right? That's what... Yeah, what was it like then, being there with that image that you inherited from your parents? What did it do to you? It was uh, claustrophobic. What? Claustrophobic. Yeah, I, you're probably right. Could you put words like, on it? Um, felt like um, very closed down and like uh, like in a shell ah. uh, and oh. always something like some kind of um, uh, something pressing down mm. like a um, uh, there was some kind of like I don't know how to put it, like an, uh, the Germans. Okay. It's like, I can, I just it's like it. the, the boogeyman or something. Okay, okay, all right. So, <clears throat> in the dream then, what was it like going back there now, see? I moved back to Germany. Well, what state of mind was that in? It was really bad. It was like um, this kind of like stagnant feeling, like um, like moving, like it's like living in a um, in the mountains and then moving into the city into like a cellar. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, and uh, not only that, then you're also in the dream going back with your parents. What does that do to the experience? Yeah. It didn't help. Yeah, well, was, in what uh, way? Yeah, uh, so what was it like uh, going back to, in that circumstance? Well, with going back with my parents is even more... Um, uh, it's like there's one level of going back, and then there's another level of going back, which is with my parents. But the dream has... It's, you're also going with your parents' parents. Right. What does that add to it? That adds, that's like plugging everything into an amplifier, which <laughs> makes it all a um, hundred times worse. Because ah. now we're living, I'm living with my parents in the apartment, with my dad's parents yeah. as well. Yeah, you put emphasis on the fact that it was your dad's parents. What does that do to it? Oh, it just adds another... Um, um, a layer of um, uh, hierarchy or layer of um, control, mm. a layer of um, mm. stiffness. Mm. And yeah. So, Julie, is he answering the question? Now, what is it like going back to Haken? But you think that's inappropriate to ask him those questions. Well, he says we're driving hey, home hey, from hey, Haken. Hey. You thought it was inappropriate to ask this type of question. Do you still yeah. think that? What, what is it that closes you down, that I'm not allowed to ask that kind of question? Okay, enough. Now, you spotted something in the last sentence that we didn't cover. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to deal with it? Come on. Push it. Okay. Um, so I would just ask again, given the context that you just described, what's the significance of your driving home from Hagen? Uh, See. With all of you. Hey, hey. <clears throat> uh, what was it, uh, what did it do you to, to uh, given what you just said, to uh, be driving home from that place? Therefore, what kind of state of mind must you have been in? Like you're going from it, is that right? Is that what it says? Read that sentence. 
We're driving home from Hagen. Oh, what is? Well, we didn't live exactly in Hagen. We lived next to it. So it was like um, we had just been out or we had been... Uh, um, See, we wanted to get in the dream. At that moment in the dream, what was it like being in, at that sen in that sentence? Well, it felt very, it was very familiar, mm -hmm. and, um, but wrong. But wrong? Yeah. <laughs> in what way? Uh, like, I'm, I'm not supposed to be in this situation. Ah. <laughs> like, um, ah. I, I don't, I don't belong here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's all. In that's all in the first sentence. Yep. Say, so, why is it that Eldar or anyone else, we don't write the dream in terms of its content? Hmm. Right? We kind of step back from it and write it topically, as if it were a newspaper article. Today I went from here to there and went here for there. And, right? When we're writing, we pull back and write in a different style than the content of don't we? Yeah, I think that keeps it alive in a way. I think it's kind of like the way we deal with living with these problems. Yeah. We don't really say it like it is. Yeah. We tell ourselves a story that is kind of polished and looks yeah. pretty or something. Um, what well, do you take think? It, dump it, and put a million. Yeah. Like if if I was, if I, um, is that you? If it was normal for me to speak like that, like I just did, then yeah. I don't think I would have these problems. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. That's very important, isn't it? Yeah. See, our experience. If we stay with our experience, we're right. When we pull back and make believe we're editorial writers for the New York Times and only going to print what's fit to print, right? We're cutting out all the meaningful stuff in our own experience. Why? What do you think of that? That's being polite, by the way. Right? That's a sickness. That's a pathologos. That's a pathologos? Yeah, it's a pathologos. Yeah. Like That's making our own story about yeah. it, our own drama. Yeah, so we, but then. We can't handle our experience, so let's put it in some terms that we can. Yeah, like we pull back and then we write about it as if we're an essay in English class. But in the dream, is he experiencing it like a logos? It's not like he's like Hagen, terrible, Greek, or Germans, you know, over, rolling over me. He's not in the dream doing that kind of analysis of the symbols right it is experienced like a story so, right so yeah right, he, but he's not saying you have a state of mind right i mean there is a lot of what he said that is in the dream well it's all in the dream it's just that i don't um acknowledge it unpack it yeah yeah when you say acknowledge it you mean like be aware of it put words on it understand it Put words on it is a good way to put it, because it is there. Like the state of mind that I just described, it's all it's all in the dream. It's just not verbalized, and it's not. I haven't put any words on it. This is. Uh, I, I, I had also Josh's question, and and also uh, a corollary, which is pragmatic. Like you're holding the tape recorder at three in the morning and you're doing your best to remember the damn thing before the images fade. I mean, you're trying to get it down as fast as you can. So in a sense, you don't really have time to sort of go into the each one like that until, uh, unless you were going to do it later. No one, no one wrote down the law that you can't reflect upon it later and fill in the material that you need to, uh, to understand it. 
So the challenge then, if that's the case, would be would be to do that, to, to transcribe it and say while you're transcribing or reflecting later to, to add more of what you're calling the content into that. Well, it is the content. It is the content. Yeah, what we write down is just this framework. It's just this, I went here, I did that, I thought I was talking about Also, I think that if you did have the habit of <laughs> recording it, it's likely you would be putting in much, much more personal things within it. Even at the time of recording? Mm -hmm. If you didn't have the habit of recording it, you'd be putting in much more personal things. And, and richer. If you did. If you did have that. That's why I say the best thing to do is to try it. Sorry, Pierre, you're saying if we did have the habit, not if we did not have the habit. I thought, see, I thought Jeff's point was, we're recording at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's difficult to record at 3 o'clock in the morning. Your response was, well, uh, there's nothing that says you can't go back and put that reflection in when you transcribe it, for example. And then I thought that, it's this, this is the point, that I thought you said if you did not have a recorder, you'd be putting in more personal. But you're saying what? Uh, it's two things. One, I'm saying that, yes, that's true, but once you start doing it, you'll see that you can represent more, more correctly yes. the emotional content or the uh, meaningful levels of a dream. Okay. And right, you, you're table? instructing yourself. You see, you're instructing yourself. You're saying, hey, don't just type out a New York Times article. Mm -hmm. Come on now, right? Tell yourself, and you'll do it. All you have to do is remind yourself to be more human. It's not difficult. No, I right? agree. You've told us in uh, in every dream there are, there are three things to look for. Um, I can only remember two at this point. One is uh, states of mind. Two is logos, or or at least words that are caught. And what's the third? Actions. Uh, actions yes. And I, I do recall that in the past, as I've transcribed at three in the morning, I try to remember that the, that the midwife is going to be looking for those three things. And if I can capture it now on tape, especially those states of mind. But you're not transcribing at three o'clock. No, I'm not transcribing. I'm just at the, in the moment of, yeah, exactly. What he's saying is like, you, and I, I did find that I, um, it's actually easier to do it at that time. Mm -hmm. So the the real issue. But the is problem is you can lose the rest of the dream trying trying to go into that. Anyway, we don't realize that seeing is reflecting. You mean what we did just now? Yeah. What's the difference between the way you wrote it and what you now delivered in, in the past few minutes? What's the difference between the two as you look at that and the statements you've made since then about the dream? I'm doing a lot more seeing. Yeah. Logos is a way of seeing. <laughs> we believe experience is central. That's bullshit. Mm. It's just simply not true. Oh, right. And logos means more than the word. I mean, I'm just thinking about what you said about reflecting upon what you recorded. Like, I think, like you're saying, we have this New York Times or something way of recording our dreams. We want to capture it quickly before it escapes. Absolutely true. But we don't give that kind of mindful, almost loving attention to what the significance of the words in the dream is, which is the real logos, right? Sure. And it's only with, through the logos that you can recover it. Mm. Or see it. Mm. Like, what's the difference between the way you wrote it and now looking at it? Because once you have that opening now, I bet the next paragraph is going to be different to you as a consequence of applying the logos to the first first couple of oh, sentences. Yeah. Well, already as I was oh, as I was um, 
saying the logos, I was already thinking about how that changes the yeah. the next. I mean, right. It was already happening. Like, yeah, it's already happening. The drama, the rest of the dream's pretty clear now. See? Mm. Oh yeah, like if you once we read, I mean, yeah. now like where the problem lies. And right. Now you can go for where the problem lies. It's abundantly clear. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. So try it. What do you see in the second set, paragraph? Because you have represented it very well. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. As I sit down next to my mom, I get an urge and remember about a talk I heard about how women appreciate small things. So I put my arm around my mom. She's very receptive and leans into me. She says, you know, when you were a kid, I used to come home sometimes and not even acknowledge you. I would just ignore you. That was bad. I say, I don't quite remember, but I'm not saying that it didn't happen. It probably did. She says, often when I get home, your grandparents have forgotten to turn off the light, so I make sure to turn it off right away. Interesting. Interesting that uh, in that statement, there's a way to approach the logos and the family, isn't it? You mean where I said I don't quite remember? It's in the first sentence. Read it. As I sit down next to my mom, I get an urge and remember about a talk I heard about women how women appreciate small things. Yeah, hey. You now know how to talk to women. This is a way to learn how to talk. This is the dream is saying, oh, this is, uh, go ahead, finish it. That was the way in with my mom to talk about stuff. That's the rules of how to talk to your mother. Is that right? Is that what it says? That's all I'm asking. That's what it says, yeah. That's all we deal with, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, in the ensuing discussion, does it consistent? Is it consistent with that? Talk about small things. Talk about, appreciate. Yeah. Well, she she opens up like she do, she does open up and she says something that's that's meaningful. Uh, what's interesting is that <coughs> uh, it looks like from this way of talking, learning to talk this way, you're not allowed to ask what it means. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, I don't. Yeah. Into it. yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Like, what would be the ideal question to ask your mother when she says what she says? What does she say? Well, it would be, why did you do that? What happened? So when I get home, good. Often when I get home, good. She says. Uh, often when I get home, your grandparents have forgotten to turn off the light. So I make sure to turn it off right away. Yeah. It seems mundane. No, no, no. It's not mundane. Do you find it curious that the grandparents do that? And that the, her mother doesn't say, hey, why don't you turn off the lights? Why do you wait for me to turn it off? What's going on? It's pretty weird. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. When did? How did you see it weird just then? Because it's like a recurring thing. Yeah, it's a recurring thing. It's a pattern. Mm -hmm. 
And her mother never turns around and asks her parents. Why? Why do you do that? Yeah. yeah especially since it's costing you money. And it looks just like what I was doing. Right. Right. What? Because I, um, I didn't ask my mom why she used to come home and ignore me. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, they're ignoring. Is ignoring a, a major issue in that paragraph? Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, what is that due to you see that? <coughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, it's all over my family. It's not just... Mm. It's a mm. micro, macro thing. Yeah. This paragraph. Yeah, yeah. If you carried that into the next paragraph, what would you do? Huh. I would realize that that's exactly what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. With, which I think is the problem of the dream, mm -hmm. is me um, mm -hmm. ignoring the problem and not 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 saying, not speaking up, not talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Investing in it almost. Yeah, I'm like... Becoming uh, more invested in yeah. it. Keeping it alive. <coughs> you want to try the last one? Yeah, yeah. What? Uh -huh. um, I mean the last one. She says, we're settled in, but we could do something to get even more settled in. I say, oh. hey, why don't we cook something? <laughs> Some meat that we used to cook in the apartment. That will make us feel even more at home. That's where, he's going. <laughs> That's where he's really going. Into it. <laughs> My mom agrees. I say, yeah, let's stop at a store on the way. It's just like I'm just walking into the fire. Will you skip the sentence that says, for me, I'm... I was about to say that I don't like it here and then I want to go back to Australia. But I decide, I decide not to ruin the family moment oh. and take it in a different direction. And that's the way they're dealing with the issue that their son may want to move to Australia. Let's go cook, cook something. It'll be just like home. And ignore you. Well, and rather than say, Mom, why did you ignore me? He takes it in another direction. Rather than say, Yo, Mom and Dad, why did you not turn the light off? She takes it in another direction. Right. And he, he ignores himself. Yes. And takes a little another direction to not ruin that family moment. Yep. Now you're saying, what's the difference? Settled into sitting outside. Well, it's just so clear now. <laughs> yeah. what, what made it clear? Well, hmm. I don't know. I read it the first time; it wasn't that clear, but now it's so clear. Um, Come on now. Well, you're, you're, um, I mean, that second paragraph, with, uh, you're pointing out that he didn't say what he saw. And then it opened up, that dynamic opened up. Everyone was doing it now. Then you have to know why you're not asking those kinds of questions that open up such things, right? Mm -hmm. And you sneaked it in, by the way, by saying it's not appropriate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. A good Christian girl doesn't ask questions. Right. They're always appropriate. <laughs> Same as Muslim kids. I had a dream last night. That's good. Mm. Yeah. The night before. I'm swimming in the ocean with a group of people. Mm. Very pleasant. And I look up. And there is the most monstrous wave coming that you have ever seen. It fills the sky, fills the entire sky. Wow. And it's crashing. And uh, I find rather curious that I'm in it. The, all the crashing waves, all the foam and all that. And I'm just going right through it, just having pleasant times. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds familiar. Yeah, you know. Hmm. 
See, that's the New York Times statement. Mm -hmm. What? No content. What was the your, New York Times? Oh, personal I see what content. you mean. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's the description of the dream. That's the description of the dream. It's not. It's false. Mm -hmm. So do we get the, the meaning, the significance? What was it like in the middle of all of that foam? Mm. What do you mean by foam? Hmm. Uh, considering the monstrous size of it, what happened to yeah. any fear or reluctance to engage? It's gone. Then what took its place? A, f a freedom right. of movement to go with it, hmm. to engage. Oh, it they also had a luminous quality to it. Oh, it did? Oh. Oh, yes, it did. Now what am I doing? You're, well, you're getting into the significance, the level of meaning. You don't see without reflection. Mm. Because it will pull, it'll force you to pull out from what is obscured by the New York Times approach to get its real meaning. Nice. So that means you also have to be willing to be rude. Uh, Carmel sin against bringing up a good girl and a good family, a good Christian family, that they don't ask embarrassing questions. Well, you know, there seems to be such a... Uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, people aren't allowed to exp say they have feelings in this culture. Especially, it seems like men, maybe? I don't know exactly, but it looks like this is a whole problem in this culture. So it comes up with dreams. And I found myself sometimes um, transcribing my dream, and your voice will come up saying, and that, what was that like, right? And I go, oh, I don't need to put that now. <laughs> this is just for Pierre. And I go, wait a minute, no, this is for me, ultimately. Maybe he's not even going to review it, so then I have to, then I answer myself. What was it like? So I, I'm starting to do that more with myself. Incorporate your own, the questions that ultimately are about me. Yeah. It's not for you. Right. Um, but like with you, why didn't you incorporate those feelings when you transcribed this or when you recorded it? There's a, there's a reluctance, there's a reluctance there, like, uh, I don't know what I told myself, probably like, it's not necessary, or let's, let me just get the main stuff, or... The main action, the main experience. Uh, you're only yeah. allowed to talk about little things. Well, little things. Appreciate little things. Well, that's what women like. But that's what but he's that's, doing. Hmm. That's true. Well, but he's avoiding all the feelings that the people have. See, the anyway. word feelings, I think, is, a, is not a sufficient word. So okay. States of mind. Hmm. States of mind, you know? yeah. Because that's big. Yeah. Curious. It's almost like uh, when when I was recording the dream. It's almost like there's a there's like a wave of of water um, of of meaning that I'm like trying to hold back <laughs> and, I, and I'm just like no no let me just write this this words just, just like that wow that's <laughs> it you got it <laughs> and if we take Pierre's dream on just the space value he's looking and he's moving through that because that is a way he's getting he's enjoying the meaning 
if I did write it all out, I would be like, I was uh, talking for like, I don't know, probably very quickly, but um, there would be a lot more content. Maybe four or five pages. Yeah, but then you would be seeing it and you can looking at yourself. Hmm. I have another question. What's that word urge? Thank you. Thank you. What's that? Is, that a, is that an Australian term? I sit next to my mom and I get an urge and remember about a talk. Is that not an American? It's a joke. It's a joke, I think. What? I don't think so. Urge? You don't, you don't know what urge means? It's like an I mean, impulse. I think you're asking significance, but you're starting at the level of definition or something? Well, you I get know. an impulse and then you, your that's, memory comes? That's right. No, the... Well, an urge is like an impulse, a, a desire to do something. Well, in the dream, though, right? Oh, an urge to do something. Yeah, an impulse. I think that's what she was asking. Yeah, Unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's what she was asking. Yeah, pick what it up from what Barbara was what, what's, what was your... Uh, well, in, the, in, in an analogous way, the same way she raised a really good question about Hagen, she didn't ask you about the significance of Hagen. And here she's asking you whether urge is some kind of a word, but she's not asking you the significance of that word, right? Mm -hmm. Like the state of mind in the same way that you explored Hagen, you could then perhaps, if you mm -hmm. unf unfold, yeah. what uh, that state of mind is. It, it was like a... Uh, um, there was like a, a desire to connect with my mom, mm -hmm. and it was um, there was a kind of um, a, a pull or a. Um, um, and this is what you settle for. Mm. Right. Urge. Wow. What, so, that's so right. There's connecting it. Right. To the, net, so, to the significance. Or the. See, like there's a. <clears throat> I forget the guy's name. I was told in a discussion recently. There's a new movement in psychology that's capturing. And this thinker is saying, hey, words have an emotional component. There's a new thinker in. Really? Yeah, is carrying, this a true story? Oh, going really wild. <coughs> it's, I are you serious? It's taken him that long to. Yeah, suggest? the guy has got many books and he's wow. the head of a journal and he's published 350 articles already, always the same thing about the same thing, of course, mm -hmm. like Albert Ellis used to do. Mm. Write the same article with a different title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. They're, oh, they're yeah, they're, they're getting, well. yeah, yeah, they're getting out of Papa Freud. Wow. What's the name of this guy? It's interesting, Julie, that you something look to me like, like you took a step back. Something like Grind or, or something like mm. that. Grimes? Oh. I'll, I'll get it if you Was want. Was that the guy? Grinder. Huh? Grinder? I think something like that. Was it really Grinder? I, I don't The words have an emotional content? Yeah, they're, they're like this, this woman who happens to one of the leading thinkers in that oh. game was talking to me and telling me about this great breakthrough and I'm going oh, shit <laughs> I'm glad to hear it is it Lakoff? Lakoff? <laughs> no I'll, I'll give you I'll, Can pa I ask, I'll pass it to you I'm going to ask you another question yeah. about this dream so yeah. you felt you wanted to make contact with her so then you remember about a talk about how women appreciate small things so you put your arm around her what did you do with the memory of Women appreciate small things. I put my arm around them. Oh, that was the small thing? That was the small thing, yeah. Oh, okay. Like a little bit of affection. Yeah. So you're, what are you doing? Same here? thing. She accepts that as an answer. Let's see what she does with it. Well, she, she sure opens up to you when you did that. Perfect. Yeah. What do you want to know? What do you want to ask, Joy? But what about him? It seems to work very well. It's like overwhelming the amount of information that's coming out now. And I feel like I'm taking this in my direction and not letting him just... That's your problem. That sounds... 
Why, why do I say that's your problem? Because you're depreciating your input. Oh, by saying that I'm taking it in my direction? That I didn't want to take it in my direction. Right. Hey, why put the word my in front of it? Why not say, it looks like this is a worthwhile direction. Why did it have to see? You put it in terms of personal, right? Well, that's I didn't want to take it in my in direction. <laughs> that's what you've always right. told me in the past, you know, that yeah, I was taking it in my direction. No, 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 I'm saying mm -hmm. that statement inhibits mm -hmm. you. Yeah, it does. Well, yeah. I'm just saying, why not knock it out? It implies some kind of like selfishness. Or yes, yes. Well, yes, that's or distortion or yeah, something. That's right. mm -hmm. Or it's only me. Yeah. Rather than I'm following a logos or I'm following a reasoning. Like she really opened up big time to you by just you were putting your arm around her. Yeah, she did. What was the impact of Kind of surprising. That's the key. Wow. That's the key. So that's, that's enough. And I didn't even like um, ask her anything about that. She just started talking about something that she feels guilty about. Yeah, that really shows that uh, she's really opening up big time. All right? That what you said? Well, yeah, that um, really is. That really shows someone opening up well, big she's time. Saying, well, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. So, what did you think of? Hey. Yeah. Okay, that's that's me. That's putting my judgment on it. I should have asked him what was it like hearing her say that, or what did you make of her saying that? Oh, um, your your question, yeah. See, the issue is whether what that what that gesture involves and what she th what he thinks about it in the dream. Right. What does he think about that? Right. Yeah. Like you put it in high terms, she's really coming on. If he accepted that as a example of really coming out, his mother really showing at a high degree. Notice what he right. would be accepting as a high degree of affection from his mother. Yeah. It's pretty low. Hmm? It's pretty low. Yeah. <coughs> See? That was pretty low, he said. Yeah. But he didn't deal with it, so that was the main thing, that you didn't react, you didn't... What was your state of mind when she said that? I mean, that we talked about that already, but... Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. it did ask it already, it, yeah. therefore you don't have to ask it again. Right. Yeah, because it's not likely to change. <laughs> Right. Well, I, is it you? I should? felt uh, I felt okay. pretty good about it. it David, like, go ahead. David. Well, I, I just had a, it. Was, He's answering. Yeah. It was rare for her to do that kind of thing. So even that little amount of her opening up made me feel like that she was giving, like she was giving a lot. But now I see that it's not really. I mean, oh, yeah. What did that do? Did that is it do? rare for you to um, show that kind of affection and concern for your mother, or is that a typical thing? Uh, I guess it's more on the rare side. Yeah. yeah. So, wh what was what was that like doing that? Mm. That was good. That was, that was, um... What state of mind were you in? 
was, that was meaningful. I was giving. I was in a giving state of mind. So like, kind of sharing. What, <coughs> what, what brought that on? Within, within the limits established in the family. Yeah. Yeah. Say, so, I'm going to take off. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to put this on on Friday night. What is that? Oh. Uh, the best. Oh, month. good. Okay. It's a, a revision of his old thesis. Hmm. Which yeah. one is that? Greg Powers. Yeah. All right. Fair. Okay. Eight, yeah. Six eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Six o'clock. Eight o'clock meaning instead of dream work. Yeah. Okay. Next uh, Friday. Eight o'clock or six o'clock. Eight o'clock. I can't get there at six. I'm working. But, but Sorry, go ahead and put it on. Do you want me to announce it? On yeah. The, okay. That it's going to go on at 8 o'clock? 8, 8, 30, whatever. Okay, something like that. Okay. Yeah. okay. Do you want me to say anything <clears throat> about... Yeah, and work? I thought uh, we would... Uh, I think it would be worthwhile, now that we're into Proclus's element, <laughs> to invite people to sit around in a semicircle and talk about each, those propositions that are significant to each person and to share what they see in it, rather than me opening my mouth up there. Oh my God! Are we talking <laughs> What God? I don't you, think so. Really? I'm you, not interested in a group discussion. You owe us a list of propositions that we're going to be looking yes, at. Yes, that's true. You so you somewhere going. down the line, after we look at those. <laughs> Okay. Or, All right. I know. I don't know. Uh, we'll change yeah. that for later then. Yeah. Are, but later. you are still going to get that list out. Oh yeah. You, 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 yeah. I mean, nice. we can do we could do it round table once you've submitted the list. Yeah. I once think if that's what list, you want to do, Pierre, yeah. that's what we should Good. do. The sooner you get the list, the sooner yeah. we can do the other. Good. Because well, it's a very the, he has a very beautiful order ordered intricacy in weaving in and out. Are we doing Parmenides tomorrow? Yeah. Where are we doing Parmenides? I don't know. Neither I, do I. I. That's why I'm raising the question. That's a good question. Uh, I can't tomorrow or Monday, but then following that, I can. That means Wednesday? Wednesday, yeah. Um, All right. I'll do it. It's okay here. Thank you. Thank you both. Eight o'clock tomorrow. Eight. Okay. Tomorrow on Sunday. Yeah. Seven and Monday. Okay. And I need one of those because I'm working. That's the way it is. Thank you, Pierre. Pleasure. Pleasure, guys. Nice dream exploration, Randall. Thank you. In lieu of clap, 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 all so by myself. Show the clap, 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 Are you going to show that movie? On <laughs> yes. Do you want to show yeah. it at Thank six? You. No, 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 I no. Okay. I, I thought we agreed that eight thirty is. Isn't that I'm right? sorry. A, a, yeah, eight thirty is fine. Yeah. Okay. Although the key has to be picked up at eight. You know what I found interesting about that? You reach out to your mom, and she tells you she used to ignore you. I, what do you think about that juxtaposition? I mean, that. Sorry, that's not my mind. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. pretty weird. The first thing that came to my mind was that. Like in that moment of intimacy, uh, she mm -hmm. shares something she feels guilty about, but there's also like, <coughs> I don't know, it, it also kind of <coughs> ruins the moment, or like, hmm, interesting. Or mm -hmm. she doesn't address the fact Helpful. you put her arm Helpful. around. Yeah. And so does that contrast with your desire not to ruin the moment later? In some way, that's an interesting expression. Yeah, I didn't really like that expression, mm. ruin the moment. Mm. <clears throat> Did you answer uh, Jeff's question? What was that? He said, yes, why are you having that dream? How does it relate to your dream? Yeah, that's yeah. a good question. Right. 
Yeah, I've been <laughs> doing some things that I know are not helping me. And um, it's got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Gotcha. All right. All right. Always put it right. It's always. It's always about the present. And can I ask you a question privately later? At some yeah, want to go? Yeah. No. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, for, guys. Thank you, Julie, for letting me push you here and there. Oh, yeah. Thanks for pushing me here and there. <laughs> so, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, just a quick note. This morning I was doing some exercise.